I am Dean Lander. Uh, I am Head of Repair Sector Services at Thatch and Research. And I want to talk to you today about um, electric vehicles. And I want to ask you the question about is your business actually really EV ready? And do you understand what that means? Um, and if not, don't worry. We've got you back. We've got some solutions in mind. But why does it become really important for you as businesses to be um, electric vehicle ready? It's because it's not stopping. This growth in EVs is going mental. The government have truly put their foot on the accelerator with legislation. That means this isn't something that you can kind of bury your head in the sand as a business and say, it's all right, it's not going to affect me. I only repair this type of car. Because very, very quickly, that type of car will become minimum in your workflow. And the electric vehicle will become the, the, the dominant in your workflow. By 2030, no new purely combustion engine vehicle will be able to be homologated and put onto market for, look, for sale. By 2025, that will include hybrid vehicles as well. The government have legislated that it will be zero tailpipe emission on any new designed and homologated car by 2025, by 2035. We and many other organizations that are looking at this statistically are identifying the level of growth that this legislation change will bring about. You can see these are 2020 figures. Um, 2021 is not any different, but combustion engine vehicles, your petrol and diesel engine vehicles, sales and registrations year on year is just dropping through the roof. While um, hybrid and electric vehicles is increasing. But as you can see by the numbers, hybrid vehicles are really on the rise. And that's, why, that's because vehicle manufacturers, some vehicle manufacturers haven't yet advanced their technology into the battery electric vehicle. And a transition to a hybrid model is relatively simple engineering wise. But you can see this 66% rise in battery electric vehicles is really kind of where we're looking at the numbers. And our predictions from these numbers would suggest that with this legislation, by as early as 2026, we're gonna see 20% of the car park, battery electric, plug-in hybrid vehicle um, dominated. That's gonna affect your businesses. Nobody can, nobody can deal in the automotive industry and say, it's okay, I'm gonna cut 20% of the workflow just because I'm not ready for it. But what does ready mean? I want to bring to everybody's attention because I don't think it's being landed in the industry. There is no legislation from this government that says that you have to be licensed to work on an electric vehicle. Instead, what they're doing is saying there is already legislation in place around the Electricity at Work Act and HSE are using that act and producing guidance and publishing it on their website, giving you businesses information and insight as to how they will react if it goes wrong in your workshop. The challenge with it, what they're saying is, they're identifying clearly what the risks are that you face as a business. And they're pretty, they're pretty clear to understand presence of high voltage components will pr produce a fatal electric shock risk into your business that you're not traditionally used to dealing with. Storage of electricity energy creates new risks to explosion and fire within your facilities that you're not used to dealing with. Components that contain that voltage even when switched off. Um, one of the more interesting ones of this is the potential for vehicles to start moving unintentionally due to magnetic forces is a risk that you wouldn't normally be dealing with. So the HSE, and this is all on their website, and I would encourage you to go and read what's on their website because this is directed at you as businesses and business owners. They're identifying the risks that they're expecting you to manage if you have electric vehicles in your workplace. Very interestingly, 
they're starting to identify and name specific job roles where you will have to be able to provide evidence of having trained people in electric vehicle awareness. They mention valeting. They mention sales and lower risk activities. They mention emergency services and vehicle recovery agents. They clearly state maintenance and repair, excluding those directly related to high voltage. And they mention those working on high voltage. So as a business, I think what you need to take away from that is that just having a qualified technician to be able to work on the high voltage system is not sufficient training for you to evidence to HSE should something go wrong. Hopefully it never will, but should that go wrong? I don't think any of us sat in this room, I certainly can't ever say, with all my training, with all my capability, knowledge and skills, I've never made a mistake. You can't put all of your faith in one single or a few single individuals to be trained and then never ever make a mistake. That is, that's a risk that no business would, want, would take. And if that's the risk that you do take and something does go wrong, HSE will look at this regulation and HSE will look at this guidance that you've been provided as businesses and if they find that you haven't taken that into consideration then HSE will take action against your business. So not only are you now dealing with the real unfortunate circumstances of an incident in your workplace, potential fatalities, serious injuries, potential um, damage to your facilities through fire and explosion, but you've now got health and safety executive fining you, restricting the sort of business that you can conduct. That's why Thatcham Research have used our expertise to bring to market a program that enables you as a business to protect yourself and ensure that you are EV ready. Um, our program empowers businesses to interact with EVs safely and effectively across their whole workforce. Everybody within the business is trained to an appropriate level to ensure that they have the knowledge to stay safe in and around a workshop environment, that they have the capability to interact with the customer more effectively being able to talk about what an electric vehicle is and what they need to do about it. It's a unique blended program, so we're not taking people out of the workplace because we know that's a real struggle. You can't close your business for a day and send everybody off onto a training course. However, if they've got access to it online, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, and you know that it's going to be consistently updated where our research discovers any new important information associated with the curriculum, it's a great asset to have. So you don't just go on a training course and walk away with a manual that's never updated. Our EV Ready program is constantly updated to protect the business. How does it work? It comes in three clear stages. It combines e-learning with face-to-face -face training, where face-to-face -face training is essential. You can't train somebody to make an electric vehicle safe and to remove and reinstate component parts of the high voltage system using um, online learning. Um, it has three core components. We call the first component EV Aware, and it consists of eight e-learning modules. Um, it's broken into two unique journeys, um, an essentials journey for everybody that works in the business, and then an enhanced journey for anybody that's actually going to come into physical contact with a high voltage vehicle. And then our level three IMI back qualification for technicians who are going to be responsible for making that vehicle safe for everybody else to work around. On completion of those two elements, and successful passing of the tests, knowledge tests and practical tests at the end. Body shop, garage, the business receives a certificate clearly highlighting and identifying that that business has been through the program and it is in fact EV ready and can be used as a sales tool towards your work providers to capture that growth in the market.
as I said, it's got eight modules, and this is what I talk about, it's updated. This clearly states six key modules. The ability to identify the technology, vehicle design, health and safety, the component requirements of HV system, what the working voltages are and what the equipment needs are, and what the influences, impacts are on the repair processes that you would have in your business. Split into two areas, everybody in that business, as I say, will do the three core essential models, modules, the identification of the technology, health and safety around the vehicle and the vehicle design. And everybody that will put their hands physically on the vehicle would do the last three modules. In total, the essentials journey can take between two and three hours of learning because it is simply a knowledge transfer piece. We're probably talking about six, six and a half hours of learning for somebody that's on the fully enhanced journey. But we've designed it in a way that it is interactive to the learner themselves. So it goes at their pace. Unlike going on to a physical practical training course, the course has got a duration, starts at 9.30, finishes at 3.30, that's it. You've got to get what you want to get out of that course within that time period. This is up to the individual that's taking the training on board. Speak about the technical requirements. So to be EV ready, we feel that a business needs a minimum of two people qualified to a level three standard to be able to make that vehicle safe, to be able to interact with the HV system once it's been made safe, to be able to remove and replace component parts should they be affected, and to be able to reinstate that vehicle back to its original working condition. It's a really important part because it's very easy to think that you've reinstated the electrical system but you've got leaks, you've got shortages, you've got all sorts of things within that electrical system. So reinstatement is going to be um, critical um, as we move forward. You don't want customers coming back going, I've got my electric car back, it's great, but I had, I had 300 miles of range when I gave it to you. I've only got 250 miles of range every time I charge it up. Now you've finished with it. As I say, there's a, there's a certificate at the end, and this is, this, this is the unique part about this program that allows a business to promote itself to its work providers, to its consumers, and identify itself as being truly EV ready. And it would support any situation in which that unfortunate event may happen. You have clear evidence of training having taken place for all of those roles mentioned by HSE earlier that provides you with the evidence you require to reduce your risk profile and allow you to bring EVs into your workflow. We're just behind here, stand E40. Got all of this product on demonstration. More talks, we've got the Ionic 5 on stand. We can talk to you about that and the repair considerations we've got through our vehicle research. But once again, ask yourselves the question, are you truly EV ready? And if you're not, come and talk to us. We can help you out. Any questions? No? Nothing? Okay, thank you everybody for listening.